the matrix I perceive as real. The matrix I perceive as real. It is real and it is real. It's real. Hey creators, welcome back to my channel. If you're new watching, welcome. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about astrological event that reflects what is happening on our planet and how it can be reflected on, on your personal life. For those of you who are new to astrology, we all have unique birth charts based on your birth time and birth location. So the same exact new moon can be interpreted in a different way based on your unique birth chart. But in this video, I'm going to keep it general so you can have a general idea of what it, what the specific new moon is all about. So let's get started. So we're having new moon in Libra. So happy birthday, all the Libras. And... It's happening exactly at the 23rd degree of Libra in tropical system. Here you can see the chart and don't worry if you don't know the astrological symbols. I'm going to walk it through in English. So, uh, first and foremost, this new moon is highly mental, intellectual, because there are strong influences from Gemini, Libra, and I guess... That's about it. So Libra is an air sign and at the time of new moon, it has a lot of aspects. And I'm going to start with the north node, aka Rahu. So Rahu is located at um, 21st degree of Gemini with trine aspect 120 degree. So it is a really beneficial aspect. So on a collective level, we are going to find out new piece of information, new contexts, and we're going to benefit from basically all types of Germanian activities such as communication, social media, uh, business transaction, and new contexts, etc. This could be about learning new topics and skills, technical skills specifically. So just recognize what kind of new influence is coming and Rahu is very foreign and exotic so some sort of sudden influences are going to be uh, turning into our favor for most people and overall a lot of us would be find ourselves mentally acute a lot of us can uh, stay in the headspace and on the other hand this new moon has very strong squaring aspects with Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter. And all of these planets are in Capricorn. So one of the great ways to leverage on this new moon is basing your decisions on practical matters. Well, I would have to say that Saturn aspecting moon is a challenging position. So you could be emotionally feeling restrained, restricted, and a lot of fear and traumas or old memories can surface up. And this actually can help you make some radical changes. And depending on where you have Capricorn in your own birth chart, things are going to play out differently. So you can find out more information by looking at your own birth chart. But on a general level, you can benefit a lot from just staying cool and detached. So don't take things too personally. And communication is going to help you resolve whatever challenges you're facing. Because of such strong positive influence from Gemini, some sort of new information can propel you to bring a sense of balance in your life, especially in the house where Libra is located in your birth chart. So if you're Libra rising, it's a really great time to kind of reset your life and revamp your self-image and even physical appearance because the first house is all about physical aspect of yourself. So yeah. 
uh, since there are so many planets and cardinal signs, or lots of new beginnings and inspirational ideas will occur, and uh, and uh, the squaring aspect add a bit of tension and a friction. But keep in mind that everything is inherently neutral. So whatever that happens, you can use it to your benefit because you are the one who define what is what. So don't just blindly follow what other people perceive of. Because you have your own unique way of interpretation, interpreting things and this is going to make a huge difference. Because ultimately we are energetic being. We are living in a vibrational reality. So our body is made of energy even though it looks like solid, you know, solid uh, materials, when you zoom in everything, it's empty. And we all have our own consciousness and willpower and awareness. So regardless of your age, skin color, you know, gender, you all have willpower and you can define things. You can rewrite your personal past, personal history, Especially Capricorn represents history. So just be open to learn something new and communicate with someone else if needed. This can bring you a huge opportunities to bring a balance, bring more harmony in your life in some way, shape or form. The next aspect is moon squaring Pluto in Capricorn. Again, Pluto is one of the most intense planets in our solar system. It's very small, but it's at the very outer edge of our solar system. And it's a symbol of change, radical change, transformation. But at the same time, it rules all sorts of fear, the unknown. So you can experience a lot of emotional transformation. You can heal your emotion. You can heal your inner child and it's important that you don't take all or nothing attitude. Try to make a balance because Libra is all about balance. It's sitting in the middle of the 12 zodiac. It's the seventh sign and it, it represents the balance of any sort. So try to stay in equilibrium. Just recognize what's happening, especially internally. Don't try to be extremely reactive, which can occur because Mars is in retrograde in Aries, meaning that the martial, the aggressive and the fiery energy is highlighted than ever before. But you can actually use it in a productive way, especially this period of time in the middle of October towards the end of this month. You can benefit a lot by moving your body, exercising, working out. So this can help you stabilize your emotions. So physical exercise is a really good way to release any sort of repressed emotions or uneasiness. And last but not least, we also have Jupiter squaring the moon. So we could feel that our visions were long-term plans or even our attitude can be somewhat restricted and uh, because it's in Capricorn. And also this position can reflect that some part of our emotions are over-exaggerated than it actually is. So keep in mind that. So again, it's really important to stay balanced and grounded emotionally and what's going to help you the most is Geminian activities like conversation, your your social life, communication, learning new stuff and exchanging of any sort. Overall, it's going to be really busy and a lot of us can stay in the head space rather than heart space because of a lot of, in, a lot of focus on the air sign. So whenever you feel ungrounded, make sure to move your body, make sure to work out and, and try to internalize your passionate urge 
instead of just letting it out, letting it burst out. It's not about repressing your emotions, but you can journal, you can write down your feelings, or you can talk to your friends. You can let it out in a constructive way. So this is going to actually improve the productivity and you can get a lot of things done because Mars is super strong aspecting the new moon directly. Yeah, I think that's about it. And oh, actually I can pull a card to kind of sum up this new moon. We've got the festival creates an energetic blueprint for a fantastic party or event. Yes, so Libra is a social sign. It can represent party, event, social gathering. So even if it's not a like in-person event, we can still create um, like virtual meeting, especially when we are practicing social distance in the middle of 2020. So yeah, make sure to celebrate and gather with people. Again, this is about Gemini and stuff as well. So intellectual, like mental exchange is going to play a really significant role. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. And let me know how you resonate with it. And I would love to hear what's happening in your life and how this new moon is being reflected on your personal life. I hope you found it helpful and like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!